now at Cottonwood Visitor Center and we are gonna camp here tonight hello good morning folks today is the 21st of March 2023 and we are here at Joshua Tree National Park and currently we are at Cottonwood campground but we drove maybe about eight miles further north to see this exhibit it's currently seven o'clock in the morning and it is raining drizzling a little bit this is the view we are at Pinto Basin Road We are currently next to the Pinto Road in one of the exhibit we pull up. So the plan for tonight is to shoot some astrophotography. Uh, tonight's the new moon about I think it's 0.4% uh, moon illumination almost zero. And Cottonwood area is one of the most darkest place here in uh, Joshua Tree National Park. It's about, about uh, two and a half hours drive from LA. Um, so I'm staying there for tonight last night I stay at Jamburak's campground and it was cold windy and it's pouring rain but hopefully tonight will be a better the forecast seems to be promising it will be raining the whole day but tonight it will be clear that's what the forecast says but we'll find out I'm hoping for the best we are gonna eat breakfast soon Take a short nap and then walk around. All right, see you later. So the plan is to shoot some panoramas. This is how I do mine. So I use a monopod with a fluid head video head and I have a leveling base right here I use my Z9 70 to 200 f2.8 lens and I like to shoot it in portrait mode so first thing of course you have to establish your base extend the legs and it's drizzling currently but it's not too bad Loosen the knob, make sure you're in level, level right here. So once I establish my base, you'll see a bubble level right here. Put the bubble in the center. So what we do is uh, loosen up the knob again, right here on the side. This is like a ball head. Then we make sure I know it's moving right now because I'm it's so hard because I'm using one hand. That seems to be good enough for me, okay? Again, the bubble level in the center, make sure it's in the center, it doesn't have to be perfect, but at least in the center. Right there. Tighten it up, make sure it's tight. And you can see I have this long 120 millimeter rail, uh, 
180. So I compute for the parallax error, so it would not um, curvature, I mean, it would not bulge or it would not uh, uh, distort. So it is very important to shoot to have a nodal rail when you shoot panoramas. Okay, so let's mount our camera. to lock the tilt axis tilt so compose it where you want to be Explo expose expose for the brightest uh, scenery in that case in this case it will be in the center right there and then lock the tilt axis so you only have the fan axis okay I'll show you Remember what I told you, the grid lines right here? So for example, there is two mountains in between. So the first uh, grid line is right here on the left side of the mountain. So when we pan, the right grid line will, will match on the left grid line. Right there. And then as you go on, okay? That's how I do it. But most of the time, I shoot the center first. For example, the center will be here. So in between the in between the two uh, hill, in between the two hill, that will be my center. So I, I will expose for my center and um, focus on the farthest uh, hill right there. So I'm using a back button uh, focus, I'm always in continuous focus, so when I press the focus, it will focus. If I let go, it will stay what it is, okay? So again, shoot, frame, and then move the, le the left side, the grid line, right here, match. So the left, left grid line match the right grid line from where it is, right there. Then back to the center. Now match the left grid line to the right grid line. Right there. So that is uh, three frames um, panorama. Now we'll do five frames. So remember, I look for my center of my uh, picture, right? So I go further. Right there. One, two, three, four, and five. Actually, let's make it six. Let's make it six so I have a uh, room for uh, cropping. Unlock your tilt axis, loosen your leveling base. Make sure the bubble is in the center. Okay, there we go. Tighten it up. Now, compose for the image. Be right there. No, no, you guys can see it. I'll be right there in between that mountains. So, now. Okay, that's how I like it. Now I'll lock the tilt axis. Okay, good. Now the tilt axis is locked. I will expose it to the brightest. A little bit overexposed. Right there, so focus on the farthest. good so I'll start my pan again so if I I like it if it's like a V like a V shape like that okay so I shoot it um, on top of this mountain 
so again the grid line right here left grid line remember the right grid line as well so we take the first shot and then this is the right grid line we put that we put the left grid line where the right grid line is pan to the right there you go take a shot grid line right right here so we, we move the left grid line to this one okay this right grid line we put the left grid line right here shoot again and one more it's not gonna hurt if you take more frames so the more frames you have the more adjustability that you can you can always exclude the frames but you cannot have less frames okay hopefully you guys learn something and then we'll stitch it in lightroom okay if you don't have enough overlap what happens is the software cannot stitch your panorama so it's better to have more overlap usually 30% is the best but you can do 20% if you want it'll, uh, it'll stitch anyway but if you have less overlap the, the photos will not stitch at all all right I think uh, that's the one then we'll shoot uh, that side too it's drizzling cold windy but it's all right this is how we take uh, photos okay